HBO Max has temporarily taken Gone with the Wind out of its streaming library, citing its racist depictions of African Americans. The 1939 movie, which was set uh, during the U.S. Civil War, will eventually be presented in historical context. HBO Max, like CNN, is owned by Warner Media. Pascal de Roche is the CFO of Warner Media. He joins us live now from New York via Skype. Pascal, thank you so much for being with us. So, given this news that HBO, HBO Max is, is removing temporarily Gone with the Wind from its streaming library, what do you think the role is of the news and entertainment industry in this conversation about racial inequality and injustice in America? Hey, uh Zane, thank you for having me on. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, really important that we talk about these important topics. You know, where I would start with the decision by uh, HBO Max to remove Gone with the Wind is, look, there are, Gone with the Wind is but one example of a, of a film that portrays back Blacks in an unrealistic and unflattering light. There's not much we can do to change the past. What I think as a company, our obligation is to do is to tell stories in a much more authentic way about the black experience. And how do we do that? I think it's important that we hire black creatives that that actually can s tell the story in a very uh, authentic way and uh, make sure that it, uh, blacks are being portrayed much more realistically than they have historically. Okay, you mentioned one key word that I really want to uh, expand on, and that is hiring. I want to read you, Pascal, some frightening statistics. Uh, in 2018, black professionals held just 3%, 3.3% to be exact, of executives or senior roles at U.S. companies. And last year, more than one-third of S&P 500 companies did not have a single black board member. Today, out of all the Fortune 500 CEOs, only four are black. Pascal, is there anything surprising? Does anything in what I just said surprise you at all? Uh, Zane, sadly, you know, I'd say no. And it really is disappointing. I wish we were at a different place in the country's evolution. Uh, and uh, none of this surprises me. It is consistent with my experience. And, and part of the issue is, I, I think, corporations by and large have not placed sufficient priority and intentionality around making sure that there is diversity not only among the rank and file but among the most senior levels of the organization including the board of directors i do want to touch on your personal experience as a very um senior a black person at a, at a major company that is predominantly white Dick Parsons, the former CEO of Time Warner, said that while he was coming up, while he was rising the ranks, he felt that he always had to be twice as good to get half as far. Is that something you can personally relate to? Is that something that you also have had to get used to in your career? Yeah, look, you know, uh, that is a sentiment that is shared by many blacks uh, across the company and among uh, senior leadership spots. Obviously, it's a it's something that is really hard to prove. With that said, I think if you look anecdotally at the 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 percentage of blacks and the percentages that you quoted uh, among board members, et cetera, I think it demonstrates that we have a lot of work to do as a country mm -hmm. and as a society. And uh, I will tell you just personally, what I have observed is this. We do, uh, oftentimes you see that white males are hired based on potential, notwithstanding having gaps in their experiences. But I think minorities, especially blacks, are hired based on demonstrated accomplishments. And so when there are not, there, when there isn't a objective set of criteria to evaluate promotions, uh, invariably subconscious biases kick in and uh, and I think minorities get disproportionately impacted that I mean that that is so important uh, that's an important point that you touched on and just in terms of the solution here a lot of companies 
Warner Media, several other companies are talking about just the importance of diversity. When it comes to the issue of diversity, how do we make sure that we're not just seeing diversity in the entry level sort of minimum wage jobs at the very bottom of the corporate ladder, but actually there's more diversity as you move higher up within the company as well? I, I really believe that this comes down to intentionality and uh, how we are prioritizing these issues. You know, it, uh, it starts at the board of directors. As uh, as a company, is uh, is the board of directors prioritizing and valuing diversity? Are they setting up incentives for the uh, the senior leadership team to ensure that the, its workforce is diverse, not only at the entry levels but throughout? Uh, what are repercussions for not having a diverse workforce? Mm -hmm. You know, the thing that being around corporate America for as long as I have, the one thing that I know is this. If you want to improve something, you measure it, you incentivize upon it, and then you, uh, you, set, you make sure that you are making progress against it. If we want to improve diversity, you, you lay out specific goals on what you want to do and you continue to monitor how you're doing against it and if mm -hmm. you're not doing well against it, make sure that there are uh, repercussions for that. So, Pascal, just to sort of put the spotlight on you uh, for just a second, as one of the few sort of senior black executives at this company, you have a major responsibility. I want to ask you now, how are you going to use going forward your sphere of influence just to make sure that the black people that come into Warner Media at entry level jobs um, feel welcome and, and feel that they have a chance moving up higher on the ladder? That is a great question. Uh, but I will tell you, if it is solely up to me as a black leader to make progress, it's not going to happen. I think it has to be something, a, a shared vision among the entire John Stanky and the entire senior leadership team at AT and T to embrace this. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. And in terms of what am I doing? Look, when I look at my senior team, I have nine direct reports. Five of them are women. Two are people of color. And you know, candidly, I need to do better. Uh, but I, relative to when I got here, it's gotten much better. And we have more work to do. But I think as an organization, it can't simply be uh, the senior black executive's problem. It has to be something that is shared across the board, from starting from the board of directors down to the senior leadership team. So then how do we, just moving forward, just in terms of uh, everybody being on the same page, I think it's important to note that having a diverse workforce isn't just something that is nice to do. It's actually good business as well. Talk to us about that. It, there are so many studies that show that more diversity drives innovation, drives better performance across companies. Uh, sad to say, I don't think companies, they either don't believe it or they choose to ignore it. I don't know wh uh, which it is because it's not resulting in a more diverse workforce among the most senior levels. Uh, it, and I think if we we measure and if we measure it and we incentivize upon it, it would get better. Right. Uh, Pascal Darush, great having you on the show. Thank you so much for. Uh, a